वेलकम बैक डी एल एन एस इन द पास्ट वीक वी हैव स्टडीड वॉट एम यू एन आर एंड हाउ दे इवॉल्व इन टू वॉट दे आर टूडे वी हैव ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाइड अफ्यू कॉमन रूल्स फॉलोड इन दीज कॉन्फ्रेंसिस विच आर रूटेड बैक टू रॉबर्ट्स रूल्स ऑफ ऑर्डर दिस वीक वी विल डाइव डीपर इन टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ मॉडल यू एन कॉन्फ्रेंस इज रियली फंक्शन बाई अंडरस्टैंडिंग देयर एलिमेंट्स स्टेजेस एंड ऑपरेशन एंड एक्सप्लोरिंग दैम थ्रू वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ रूल्स ऑफ प्रोसीजर्स फॉलोड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड Model UN conferences derive their procedural framework and rules from the Robert Rules of Order, the actual UN procedures and general norms of formal conferences. They use the rules and accepted norms from these mentioned sources and modify them to suit the needs of United Nations simulation. In this session, let us try to understand the latter, the general norms of formal conferences that are adopted by Model UN conferences. Speaking Speech at any model UN conference should be formal, diplomatic and in third person. They should focus entirely on the topic at hand both in formal and informal procedures. One should never personally attack one's fellow delegates or the committee dais members verbally or otherwise. There can be diplomatic and formal kinds of exchange between the delegates that can be sarcastic or accusatory in nature but that should be restricted to the matters related to one's portfolio. it should be remembered that one represents their allotted portfolio and thus one's actions words and behavior should focus on most accurately representing their portfolio while representing a portfolio one needs to keep one's personal beliefs and political ideologies away from their speech and behavior in the committee and focus on representing the ideals of their portfolio accurately to reflect this impersonal nature of affairs The speech during formal MUN procedure should always be in third person. One should refer to themselves and other delegates through the names of their portfolios without using any personal pronouns and this stands true for speeches, motions, yields, points and questions. Example, delegate of Russia wants to ask delegate of Kenya to better elaborate on the delegate's statements regarding the delegate's stance on the agenda at hand. Here there are no mentions of i me he they there or any other kind of personal pronouns dressing the expected dress code is western formals on most days with some conferences allowing a traditional wear day in order to give the delegates a chance to better represent the cultural heritage of their nations similar to that of the real un the attire in a conference adds to the delegates confidence during the speeches or even during the negotiation The attire must be comfortable and simple for all the participants since the conference can last up to 3 continuous days with sessions of 6 to 8 hours per day and in such situations an uncomfortable or heavy attire can become a bane for the participant conversing in the formal committee session there should be no direct communication between delegates all attempts to verbally communicate to another delegate would be referred to as cross talk which is highly discouraged and perceived in the bad light by the committee dais members any speech motion point or question even when directed to another delegate should be addressed to the committee dais members in a formal committee session delegates can communicate and lobby with each other only using chits the delegates can directly communicate and refer to each other in the first person only when the committee moves into a lobbying session such as the unmoderated caucus or the informal informal session committee dais committee dais members act in the role of teachers mentors moderators and final authorities of the committee although their role in the committee is limited in the committee matters and content their role as committee moderators in monitoring and directing the committee procedure should be respected Some model UN conferences also allow for a voting provision to impeach the committee dais members but this is expected to be done in situations of high incompetence of the member and often requires a unanimous vote or a special majority vote to pass language committees that come under united nations organization have a default english language in the majority of the countries and is a norm that model UN conferences follow in major english speaking countries Some model UN conferences also allow French or Spanish as a medium of communication depending upon the countries they are organized in. In committees of regional or national political or state organizations such as the national parliament setups or political party meets 
the national official languages are accepted along with English as the primary language of communication. These language restrictions are primarily limited to the documentation and formal procedures of the committees, but considering the diverse nature of participants in model UN conferences coming from different linguistic backgrounds, English is often accepted as a norm even during the lobbying sessions. These rules are many times unsaid and are unaccounted for, but not following them creates a sense of social discomfort for the delegate which might hinder their self-confidence and negatively affect their performance in the committee. A model UN conference is not just an academic learning space but also a space of socio-political exchange and a platform for developing personal contacts with people from various backgrounds. These qualities make a model UN conference a vibrant and enriching experience and these qualities are preserved by the respect given to many of its rules and by following their norms. Let us summarize our learning. In this video, we have covered a few common rules of model UN conferences by exploring general norms of formal conferences. These rules are, speeches should be formal, diplomatic and in third person and a delegate should represent not themselves but the portfolio and its beliefs. Dressing should be western formals on most days and certain conferences also allow a traditional wear day. In a model UN formal setting, delegates are not allowed to communicate to each other directly and should only use chits to directly communicate or lobby with each other. During informal sessions, delegates can directly communicate with each other in any language of their choice. For the committee dais members, their primary role is to moderate debate and help guide the discussion in the committee and this role is supposed to be respected despite the fact that they cannot actively involve themselves in the content of the debate. Coming to languages, a general norm is English whereas certain conferences through their representation or simulation of regional and parliamentary organizations also allow the use of regional languages. In our next module, we will explore the three widely recognized model UN rules of procedures from around the world and explore the various phases and stages of model UN conference. Thank you.